20 top 40 hits, 13 million album sales. James have already secured their place as one of the great indie bands. But these Manchester icons are far from finished. Your 14th studio album is Girl at the End of the World. You took yourselves away to the Highlands of Scotland again to make this record. Is it true you just created a man cave and just locked yourselves away? <laughs> we did. Um, <laughs> yeah. by, by a lock up in the Highlands. Which is January in the Highlands is pretty, you know, tough, it's pretty extreme. Yeah. There's, there's not many distractions, which is what we needed. Uh, Jimmy, never... Jimmy was like gaffer taping mattresses over the windows to, <laughs> so the neighbours didn't complain. <laughs> Is it true you write songs in the middle of the night when you're half asleep? Yes, it tends to be uh, literally four or five o'clock in the morning. You're half asleep and half awake, so the unconscious kicks in. And I think all the best creativity, certainly for me, I do accidentally from my unconscious. We've got to the age where we can't have hits because the country won't let you. Um, you know, Radio 1 won't play music that falls outside the demographic of 16 to 24 year olds and, um, and a few other radio stations are in that bracket too. But we're making songs that we feel are as powerful as that, as anything, any we ever made in the 90s. Fans had better get used to them ahead of their UK tour as James resists the temptation to be crowd pleasers. Since we reformed in 2007, we've managed to avoid some of the pitfalls that are there waiting for any band that reforms who has a history, who has a fan base, who has a catalogue, which is being a heritage band. We've stuck to our guns, we refuse to play our biggest songs. We embrace collapse and failure because that's how we will maintain our integrity. And it's working. The tour in May is the band's biggest to date, with a night at Manchester Arena sure to be the highlight. We are a Manchester band, regarded physically where everybody is actually living now. We're all scattered all over. You know, we are a Manchester band. I mean, we're here because of Manchester. It is a very different city, isn't it, now, to back in the day. Do you still recognise Manchester, Tim? 70s were very bleak. I mean, I lived in Hume for a while on a uh, Maladale Close, which I think had the second highest crime rate and violence rate in the country. And you learned how to get your antennae up when you're walking down the streets. You know, you got broken into about three or four times and my car got broken into three or four times and... You had a car? <laughs> I, I had a, a Volkswagen Beetle. Orange. It Volkswagen didn't last Beetle. very long in Maladell Close, I tell you. Tim, can I ask you about your dancing? How did that all come about? I was sent to like a, a, a British boarding school, which was like a prison, and I'd put on punk music when no one was there and lock the door throw myself around the room. I used to get knives drawn on me in Manchester for the way I danced um, because it was before house and people danced in a very rigid codified manner and I didn't. Jim saw me with two other people dancing and asked me to dance for the band so I was brought in as the dancer not the singer. You must turn heads on the dance floor at weddings and birthday parties. Well they got used to me now. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the pet monkey, you know, that they'll, they wheel out for weddings and birthday parties. It's funny, isn't it? The Mondays had Bez. Yeah. And James has got... Yeah. James has too. <laughs> and they're glad of it, or Manchester's music scene could have been very, very different. Mike Hall, ITV News.